That concludes the news portion of our show. Please stay tuned for Ask the Source with Josh Reinstein. Hello and welcome to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein, and we're here in our beautiful studio in Jerusalem. My guest today is David A. Ivry. He's a councilman for the Shomron Council. David, thank you for being on the show. Well, hello, Josh, and thank you for inviting me. So, a lot of people are talking about Samaria these days, or the Shomron. Tell us what's happening in uh, Samaria. What's new? Well, Samaria is the, the northern part of what many call the West Bank. And we don't like using that term because it infers that this land belongs to someone else, and it doesn't. This is the heartland of Israel. And in the Shomron, which I am a member of the municipal government, we are working day and night to resettle the Jewish people in the heartland of Israel and to set down our roots in order to be here forever. So a lot of people are talking about sovereignty. What will that mean for the Shomron? Well, in, the, in 1967, Israel liberated these areas, Judea and Samaria, and most of Jerusalem from Jordan. And Israel has controlled this area through the military for the past 53 years. But Israel has never applied its sovereignty to these areas to be just like every other place in Israel. So we're in an awkward situation. The Israelis live in the Shamron. We build in the Shamron. We see our future in this place, and we see this as part of the land of Israel and part of the state of Israel. Applying Israeli sovereignty is actually the government of Israel saying, yes, this land is part of the state of Israel. You know, I've heard a lot of people talk about annexation, and it's not annexation. Can you explain to our viewers what's the difference? Th that's right. I, I hear the term annexation used regarding this situation, and uh, I'm uncomfortable with that term because the, inter the term itself, annexation, implies that one country is taking over land from another country. And that doesn't describe our situation here in Israel and in Judea and Samaria, where Israel took this land in 1967 from Jordan, but Jordan had no right to hold on to this land to begin with. It wasn't really part of the state of Jordan. Israel has historical, biblical, and legal rights to this land. So as Israel has been controlling this land de facto for the past 53 years, it is time for Israel to officially apply sovereignty to this land. Yes, you know, I've seen uh, a lot of people saying that the settlements or Judea and Samaria communities are the obstacle to peace. But if you go down to Samaria or the Barkan region where they have, you know, factories, it actually looks like a model for peace. You see Arabs working, you see Jews working. Why the misconception? The misconception is fueled by organizations who have an agenda to divide the land of Israel, to give over the heartland of Israel to Arab entities, the so-called two-state solution. So they will color anything regarding Israel's presence in this area in dark colors and say Israel's settlement is a bad thing and so forth. They will never highlight the advantages that Israel's existence in this area provide for the general population, Jews and non-Jews. Jews and Arabs who live in this area, or so-called Palestinians, who are enjoying the existence of Israel being in, in Judea and Samaria. You know, the, we talked about the deal of the century and sovereignty coming up here in Israel. A lot of people are worried, though, that it's just another two-state solution, as you mentioned, that this would lead to a Palestinian terror state in the land of Israel. Uh, are you concerned about that, or, or do you see this as a different type of plan? Concerned is a very good, good way to... Uh, to define this uh, uh, proposal regarding establishing a Palestinian state, even in parts of Judea and Samaria, is a great concern. The Palestinian Authority, which is a branch of the PLO, which is a terrorist organization who have never ceased supporting terrorism, to this day the Palestinian Authority pay very handsome wages and prizes to terrorists who have killed Jews and tourists in Israel, the Palestinian Authority has proven itself to be a supporter of terrorism. To give land in the heart of Israel to establish a country for this terror 
organization would be a huge mistake. Donald Trump is by far the most pro-Israel president we've ever seen. I mean, he moved the embassy to Jerusalem, recognized the Golan Heights. We're talking about sovereignty right now. Why do you think someone who understands the threat would put out a plan that ends with a two-state solution? Where's the disconnect? There are, there are many who say that uh, this uh, proposal is uh, calling the bluff of the Palestinian uh, Liberation Organization who don't really want a state, they don't really want to recognize Israel, they don't really want to live in peace with the Israelis. So here, President Trump is offering them, this is the best deal you're going to get, take the deal. And uh, many say that they're not going to take it, so we can rely on the Palestinians to refuse. I really am not uh, uh, in favor of uh, putting our faith in the PLO. I think that, that that is a mistake. And we should, we ourselves, should reject the idea of any form of a two-state solution. We're in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic. Millions of people around the world have gotten it, but Israel's fared pretty well. How do you see the population of Shamron during this time? Do you think it's going to grow and flourish? Do you think people are going to be nervous about moving to Samaria? How will this affect Samaria in general? Samaria, or the Shamron, is on the grow. We are the quickest growing Jewish population in all of Israel. Uh, at this time, with the uh, uh, corona uh, 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 crisis throughout the world, and within the Jewish community in many locations of the world, I think that many Jewish people are now considering making Aliyah, moving to Israel. So, as it was before the corona, where we were, had an internal migration of many Israelis who were moving into the Shamron and our own uh, natural growth within our communities, I think we're going to see an addition of Jews coming from around the world, from the diaspora, moving to Israel, and many of them choosing to live in the Shamron. At the same time, we hear everyone talking about sovereignty, and we see a very supportive U.S. administration. The EU has gotten aggressively anti-Israel with their labeling laws, especially in the Samaria. They want to label goods from those same factories where Jews and Muslims work together. Uh, you think this is going to come to a head? I think that the Europeans or any organization who wish to uh, assist, who care for peace in this region, should be supporting the industry in Judea and Samaria. I think that the industry in Judea and Samaria is a model of coexistence of Jews and Arabs, Israelis and uh, Palestinians who come and work together for a common goal of providing welfare for their families. And uh, I think that the right thing to do would be to support these industries, to support this model, model of peace. The, so far, the European governments are choosing to go against this, and uh, they, they're really um, sabotaging the only good thing of, um, uh, the only good example of uh, cooperation between Jews and Arabs in this area. David, there are literally tens of millions of people watching this show. What message do you have for our viewing audience? Well, come and visit the Shamron. Show your support with feet on the ground. See the reality here. See the things that you're not seeing in the news. And then go back and let your representatives and government know that they should be supporting Israel's stake in the heartland. Thank you, David, for being on the show. And thank you for tuning in to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein. Now back to the studio.